Hey everybody, this is Grace. In this video, I'm going to talk about, well, lately I've been watching some of these online dramas and, uh, and they're about, much of it is about, lately is about people believing in that something is owed to them. Some kind of information or owed to them about anybody they think that they should know something about or what they want to know about. Uh, demanding it, you know, that high sense of entitlement, and uh, it's all kind of, oof, but I've, I've mentioned this kind of lately, it depends on which channel I put this on, that um, I've, I've seen a quite a bit of despicable people online. This is nothing new. I first got online in 1990, and even some before then, so I've seen quite a bit of despicable people. And, of course, more lately, it's that, well, the more despicable people will use everything that's said about them, this is more and more than that past however many years, the negative stuff that is said to them about them, they use that to say about the others. Okay. Now, really, I say this is relatively new, but it's not at the same time. I mean... This kind of stuff has probably, possibly, maybe, gone on before any of us were ever on this planet. Okay, but I don't really know because as far as being online, and this is online, um, I don't, of course it wouldn't be before any of us were on this planet, but online, I, I hadn't noticed so much of that until more recently. Like I said, you know, just, I mean, it's just... It's, my goodness, you know, if somebody says you're you're so, so despicable. Even the word despicable. Okay, you do this to get money, and you say this, and you say that, and your behaviors are X, Y, and Z. Well, they'll t say, you know, X that they'll say the same thing for the people who are saying that to about them. Like as if this other side is a group or something. This is nothing new, though. But lately, it's just so much that it's like you just hear it so common, just so common. There's no way in, in no way anybody's going to uh, let somebody know your behavior is kind of not right, and let's let's work on that. And, you know, you want to work on that? No, because they just turn around saying that anybody else is haters. I've been saying this for years. <laughs> you know, but I'm first. Uh, my original channel, I've been making videos on it for eight years, just over eight years. I don't use that channel anymore. I think it's got what some call shadow banned. But I think it's because the t the name of the channel, actually, really I do. It's weird. But anyway, I don't know. That kind of stuff is just exhausting. It's exhausting. I had, I had it in my own because of people copycatting me, you know, seriously, I would put up a video with I, certain thoughts in that video, and with, uh, within 24 to 48 hours, somebody else would take it and make that thought their own, okay, and it, was, it was now the rinse repeat for, until like the past, I guess a year maybe or so, when I, because I, I did start stating flat out that I was getting so tired of it, I was start, starting to out people. I had what they call these days receipts because my videos would be up and have date. They're, they're stated and a published date and also the date they were uploaded. And if I just turn it off and I can show. But I was going to start doing that. I really was at that point in 2020, actually. Let's go back to 2020, so it's been since then. I, I was fed up, you know, with it, and, but now, but then, before then, I had been just so tired of it, so tired of the same thing, lie, the rinse, repeat, in, in my own world, I've seen it happen, stuff happen, not that one, but stuff happen to other people, actually, one of them, I actually, one of them, I started to hear where she was getting the terminology she would use every once from two. It wasn't me. Some of it was me, but also other people. 
and she just stole everything she would from anybody. She had no creativity, apparently. She could not think that much. So she, she stole, copycat, stole, you know, that's what it is. It's not flattery. It never is that flattery when somebody steals something from you. Never, ever, ever. Okay. <laughs> she would just use it. And the other guy, I really do need to out him one of these days. Seriously, I really do. And, uh, he, he's, he's still, well, anyway, but, I don't know, let me get back to this thought. Now, here's the thing, recently I had said this about being so tired of it and everything, and I wanted to see some kind of, you know, just, you know, as Adam keeps reminding me, you just wanted to see social justice, and these people get what they deserve, this kind of thing, but it kind of, in a way, goes against me. But I did feel like in a moment, you know how people say you're losing your religion or they lost their religion because of whatever it is going on. And I started to feel that way and I said, okay, I've got to back myself off, you know, and uh, think about it more. And I did and adjust myself because I am one that once the, you know, I'm not wanting someone to go to jail. I'm not wanting somebody, you know, it depends on what they do, of course. I mean, if they're you know, some things, yeah, you're going directly to jail. You do, don't get to pass go. You don't collect $200. Okay, Monopoly. But anyway, I, I had to cut out a part of that because uh, down at the end of the road, there was a, uh, I guess it's a mother and a kid. I don't put other people's kids in my videos. It, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, but still, I try to cut anything out like that if I see it. But I'm kind of worried about where are they going to I don't know. I'm really, I'm one of those, I work with a lot of kids and I'm very protective. And that, that maybe could bring me to this subject. But no, anyway. Where was I? I mean, some, some things are just, I don't know, but I'm not even sure what I'm saying here. But I've been trying lately to give examples and, and videos. And I wind up putting them on different channels because... Sometimes it doesn't make sense, and I haven't uploaded all of them yet either. I mean, not make sense, but I need a really good example of when people feel like, really, like this, it basically is that the system has failed them somehow, some way, maybe many ways, and uh, they're fighting back, and some do it in the most despicable way, and others don't. Some don't do anything at all. Some do fight back, but they just don't in any despicable way. But it's like, and, and the big, and one of the things is they could be totally wrong. The system doesn't owe them anything. Nobody owes them what they think they are. They, they want to think of themselves as, uh, you know, like every, all these uh, public servants, they have that mentality of, well, you work for me. I pay your salary. Oh, that's the most, that's one of the most despicable things I hear. I had had a situation one time when I was like, now I understand why some people say that about that one. But it was just that one situation. One place. I've lived in many places. I'm always going to the city or whatever. But I could understand when you meet one person or two people or a group or whatever it is. And they behave. You know, like they work for whatever. And they behave in that manner. You kind of, you know, you might generalize. Don't generalize. Okay. That's that one. That person, that group, that two, that whatever it is, it's them. It's not all. You know, I'm well aware of that. But sometimes you know how you can think, oh, I see why some people would say that, but they're not thinking enough. You know, but, but lately, like I said, I wanted to give us different examples of it, where some people can wind up getting to that breaking point with it. And then also some exa examples, deeper examples, of when they're wrong. Like, they're demanding that the, this government office give them all these forms, and they're demanding that they do it. And they're demanding that it's done pronto. And they're demanding they, they, they're, they deserve it. Yeah, well, they don't, really. I mean, not, they're, nobody's there to cater to your every whim pronto. You know? Like... But I can see where some people would get to that point where they feel like that. But some people just seem to live that because they do see themselves as so 
high and mighty and they they have all these employees they see anybody who works for the government whether it's a local state federal there that all these employees are their employees they're not their employees <laughs> you know they have a, a sense of ownership you know they are there to do a job for you yeah and your yours contribute to their salary barely <laughs> really when you really get down to it there are so many others paying also and you don't have ownership complete ownership of their time you know some people just have that kind of attitude and it's disgusting i'm not a lawyer so i can't go into all that i'm a social and behavioral scientist so i'm looking at it from that perspective but i, I really don't know what you can demand from a, an employee because are you think do you really think they're yours that's the problem is you just yours alone you know that they have to drop everything for you to do that right now now, I could, I could use that as an example. I could also use an example of, for my goodness, some of the things that I have been through, like, my whole life. I'm not even going to, I'm not playing histrionic. It's true. Especially with medical. And grocery stores. <laughs> I have to laugh the other day. Uh, one of my, I can laugh now. I couldn't laugh then. It's just every week is something. Every week. Like this one. I had hurt my, I don't know what I did to my left foot. I really don't. It was like the week or two or two week before, two weeks before then, my right heel. And then all of a sudden it was my left foot. It felt like it was going to crack in half. You know, like I actually broke my right foot when I was younger. But the left one, it felt like it was going to crack in half. And, and not, not down the middle, but from side to side. I was like, what's a grip? And it swole up huge i didn't even know it was swollen seriously until i tried to put my shoes on <laughs> and i was like whoa and i didn't have any reason to wear shoes for a few days and all that you know plus it was hurting and it finally started feeling better and all this and put it on was like whoa so i had no idea what i did with it so i figured i was going to go buy groceries and i'm not, like i'm not walking on this foot so for the first time in a year you know a couple of years or so not a couple of year um I don't know how long. Anyway, I, I ordered groceries, and that's a lot of work sometimes. Uh, order on, them online, schedule them out. It's, it's hours altogether. Okay, okay, I mean, it's a process. Okay. You're not ordering, it's not hours long, but the whole process. By the time that, you know, you get the order in, make sure that they got a, a funky little system going on there, but this one does. If you don't watch it, you might be paying. Uh, 25 bucks. I've seen things like 25 and 45 bucks for something that are usually like two dollars and something. Yeah, this one does that, and the other one does, did too. Another one, but anyway, um, so you got to be careful, real careful. <laughs> and it was only like a hundred dollars worth of groceries, and then of course, they didn't have six or seven of the products and the whole thing going on. And it finally got delivered. I walked out right after the guy left because I could see, you know, they have a map and they show where the person is at the time they say their name. It was the guy. So, as soon as he left, opened up the door. And I was like, whoa, I'm a tall woman. And I'm like, all the way up here, there's this perfect, this strong male cologne. I'm like, man, he was a spray on thick. Brought my groceries in. Adam was, wasn't at home at the time. And when I... I have dogs, so I had to hurry up and do it and for they to come, you know, all that thing. And then, right at the entranceway, shut the door, and I was like, whoa. I started moving one bag or two bags to the front, you know, to the other part, and I was like, oh, no. My bags of groceries smelled. Not, and it wasn't really all of them, because I think one of them it wasn't, but it was a hundred dollars worth of groceries. And even sodas and such smell like that male cologne thick i have chemical allergies that could really do me harm it actually could kill me okay it just depends and this stuff was oh my oh my 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 and um so i basically called them they gave a refund but then their attitude sucked really sucked you know 
and this is, and I remember, this is why I don't order from them. I'm not saying where, if I haven't said already. But then I had to get the stuff back out of the house, and it, and it was making me have that feeling on my face, like my face was just burning, and uh, all that stuff. So I, I put it back outside, and I, I called. And they had told, I said, I want somebody to come pick this up, because I have chemical allergies, and they need to pick this up, and they need to see this problem and do something about it. They had given me a refund and a whole ten dollars for my time and trouble. That's sarcasm. Okay. And uh anyway, but I do. And Adam wasn't home. I had no idea. He was he was at this dentist and I didn't know exactly how long and all this stuff and it was and the smell was unbelievable. And I'm not trying to be histrionic, you know that. I'm pretty much the opposite. But the smell was that bad. And I just recently had an issue with somebody else about this kind of thing. Anyway, so it was kind of raw, but that smell was so horrible. And then sitting out in the Texas sun, because I put them outside, and it was heating up that smell, which would, you get the, you get the like I told Adam, it's one of those uh, uh, ripple effects, you know. And, uh, and it did. It, it would cause more and more and more problems, issues. And just speaking to them and their, their total lack of accountability. You know, that they, they don't have to do anything. They delivered them. You know, but, but it's, it's a third party. And, you know, how are they going to send the third party out to get them and throw them away? So that's your problem. Because the woman was telling me it's my problem. But, it, of course, it was because they, they have no accountability. And uh, I was just pushing it. But, see, that whole thing of me doing that. When I see and hear other people trying, it makes me cringe. And I know it's something that would make other people's other people cringe that I tried that to do that and would actually, you know, be sarcastic or smart aleck or, or actually it shouldn't be this way in the first place about it. It shouldn't be that somebody is, ha is delivering groceries and has that much cologne and they must have had it and they they one of them even said that they must have had it in the back of their uh the groceries in the back seat and they spray some cologne okay i'm i shouldn't have to pay with my time and that awful smell <laughs> and then i have to clean it up and then i have to go back and throw it all over the pro, pro uh, program the whole thing wait more for my groceries and la 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 on it shouldn't be that way it really shouldn't. I'm not naive. It should not be that way. They have need to have some accountability for what they for what has happened, instead of just putting it all off on the customer. That's your problem. She actually said that's your problem. You know. There was no way I was going to find out how to get in touch with the person who delivered so he could come and pick it up. I would have to go through them, and I shouldn't have to be doing that in the first place. They should be. And I know, just listen to it. Doesn't it make you cringe? And I think it's be, I, I just think it's because we've gotten so used to being treated however these big places, any place, any business wants to treat us, that if we hear another person wanting to fight back, it's like, are you dumb? Are you stupid? You can't fight City Hall. I mean, I remember hearing that when I was a kid. You can't fight City Hall. And they didn't always, always literally mean City Hall, anything you can't fight them. They have it against. They have it all. Oh, they'll have the, you know. I heard all so much of my life. They have all the lawyers. They have all of this. Da, 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 da. You see what I'm saying? And we've all gotten kind of used to it. And we're like, Phew. we roll our eyes if somebody actually thinks that they're gonna do that. That's that's you being entitled, silly. <laughs> Would you tell me that that's supposed to be how it is? That people you order like if you order. Okay, like if you you order, um, I don't know what what would you order that's big? You know, like you order a computer to be, you know, I'm gonna get a computer soon, a new one, and you order it to be delivered, and uh, I don't know if that's gonna be a good uh, good example. Yeah, I don't know, or some furniture, and the the person who delivered they cracked it all up, something like that. And the process to, to return it, remember how back when that process was horrible? <laughs> Mine still be, I don't know, like if you order some furniture and it's delivered and it's cracked, 
got cracks and whatever, and say that the place wasn't going to take any responsibility for it, you know, that I would, you know, you would have to do all the work, and, or, or whatever it is, if it happened to you, would you feel like it's, you're entitled, because you expected the product that you ordered, and not one that was beaten up, broken, pieces missing, whatever, you know, that you have to go through a big process to get what you ordered in the first place. You know, I mean, sometimes is that people have to put themselves in the other shoes, the other person's shoes. And say, so how would I feel? You know, feel empathy. How would I feel? How, how, what would I think? And a lot of people don't, they say. And, but sometimes it's because we've also seen people, like I mentioned before. Okay, like, you know, the ones who have that really strong sense of entitlement. And if they don't get their way on something, which they shouldn't be doing in the first, first place, they are wrong, okay? They are wrong for what they're doing. It's just that they they throw baby temper tantrums and they're grown adults, you know? Okay, I shouldn't have said baby temper tantrums. I don't want to insult babies. <laughs> but for adult temper tantrums, the ones that do throw them, oh my goodness, it, it can be so sickening. Ugh. To, to really to see it happening when it's not somebody's taken up for themselves but it was it's just whenever they think that they can get whatever they want and you better jump to it you can get the difference right <laughs> yeah. and there is a big difference but lately I've been seeing the ones throw the temper tantrums the adult temper tantrums and it's it's the their go to on everything. I mean, you can listen for to them for five minutes. You know, turn on the TV, watch them five minutes, and you what you're going to see is like every time they're going to be saying, "Well, uh, I should, I need this, and I need that." And if they don't give it to me, then, and then they come up with some BS. And quite often, sometimes the the other one is, "I'm going to sue," and and another time, other times it's, um, "You." are an employee of the government therefore you are my employee you know it's like oh my god oh my goodness doesn't it just make you sick ill you just oh my goodness how can people be so cringy to say such things where did you get that whoever told you that the world owes you everything you want period who told you that who made you believe it? And who put it out there that this is a good thing? And to put that kind of foot forward to the world. I mean, not the world. That, now, that is an exaggeration. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But you see, just to put anybody could stumble across it. You know, like if it's online or video or whatever. And somebody could stumble across it and you think that's a good foot to put forward? A good look for you? That you're demanding like a little spoiled rotten child or children. It could be plural. This could be a group kind of thing. That you deserve everything. This, that, and the other. Yuck. Okay, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm, my throat's getting going out. My voice, this time is because I quit smoking two, around two months ago or so. You would think I wouldn't write, write it down. But after 44 years... I'm smoking. I really think it's because I make videos for me. I'm not saying anybody else. But for me, that's what worked. I've used it as a, I still use it as a pressure release valve and, and, uh, you know, doing the videos, not, not the smoking, but it, doing the videos, use it as a pressure release valve. It helped me to get to the point where I could quit. That's how I feel. I'm a social behavioral scientist. I'm looking at it from the, those lenses only. And uh, that's how I feel about it. Okay, I also had left a little note for myself. I made a video note of, for myself to remember to mention one thing. Okay, my voice is really going out. But the one thing is that I don't know how it works either. Uh, but I was diagnosed with this health condition back in two, the year 2000. But I remembered a, a doctor that I had. I remember where I had lived at the time when I saw this one doctor and I think he mentioned it was 1998 and it was in California 
I was diagnosed in 2000 in Texas. I'm in Texas right now. Okay, so I'm thinking I had mentioned that, that 2000 was the first time I had heard about this condition. It's an adrenal disorder. And uh, although I had heard about it one time before when I was in seventh grade, okay, but um, you know, by my seventh grade social studies teacher. Anyway, but I'm like, how is that? What had happened? Why does this my memory? But you know, that was a long time ago. Anyway, if I ever say it again, you know, mentioned something 1998, but then it was 2000. I don't like trying to remember back what year it was on certain things because, or even like we were, Adam and I were talking and I was saying that how many times would, did we live in Florida? And we both were like, I'm not really sure because <laughs> we've lived in several states. We got married when, when I was 18 and, uh, and then we basically got the heck out of Dodge and uh, moved around quite a bit. We, we used to say we did all the fun when we were in our, um, uh, okay, I had to move my camera. Some kids showed up, but um, we did it a lot of the, you know, like people do the RV thing after they retire and all. We would say that we were doing it before we were, you know, before, you know, before we retire. And we did. We went to a lot of places, moved to a lot of places, you know. We didn't fly. No, these were road trips. And, uh, like, all the way to uh, Florida Keys to um, San, not San Jose. What's the one above it? San Francisco. Yeah. Okay, I'm wrapping up because there's too many kids coming out. Talk to y'all in another video. Bye.